What about um, <coughs> pressures involving advertisers and not wanting to um, you know, run afoul of big advertisers, anything like that? I um, think the, uh, the newspapers in those days were so solid in terms of revenue <coughs> that I don't think um, uh, that kind of stuff would wash. In fact, <coughs> the few times people, car dealers or real estate people came in and asked uh, for something when I was in Jersey and had more to do with they wanted their legitimate stories in the paper that they didn't think they were getting enough good ink for what they did. And they, they probably had a good point in some of the things where they had awards and things of that nature. But uh, only, only once did some real estate person threaten to pull ads and I told them to uh, go ahead. I mean, I'd take them out of the paper form <laughs> because I knew that you know they had to advertise to get the returns. Yeah. But it was an error when uh, newspapers were, uh, you know, pretty, pretty uh, well off in terms of revenue, and that worked well. The flip side is, even though re newspapers aren't especially well off today, I don't think um, it would change the mix much, because most most editors and publishers are, uh, are absolute in uh, their determination to be straight. Now, we can probably find one a year that goes off the deep and narrow, but I haven't seen any evidence of that lately, so. Okay. It's an interesting point to explore, though, the idea that um, <coughs> sort of the link between ethics and, um, and being sort of financially robust, you know, the idea that, um, that the era that you're talking about, the 1960s and 70s, let's say, that the newspaper business was so strong that, um, you didn't have to take any guff from anybody in a way, you know, that right. you, you weren't susceptible or vulnerable to anybody's pressure because mm -hmm. uh, you could just flex your own muscles and just say, you know, back off. That's right. Um, so nowadays we have a, a situation where uh, uh, as a result of the net, uh, things have weakened. The only th change that I th have seen or have experienced is a number of newspapers are running ads on the break pages, in other words, the cover pages of the newspaper. And they're getting paid premiums for them, simply that they get a percentage higher than the normal rate to run them there. And that's the one exception I think I've seen to uh, the way things were. Now, there are fewer ads in the papers too, and we all know there have been staff cuts and things like that. But I haven't heard of any uh, bizarre stories. Yeah, um, it, it took 10 years. Uh, some of the other people who, who jumped on certain things got there fast, like Boston, Dallas, uh, Atlanta. Uh, they moved more quickly. But uh, the Times the time still fights its way back, to, you know, depending on who's on the desk and who's working. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, I, I, you know, the only question I had was, in my mind, was whether the advertising would be there. I knew we could sell it. I just, you know, had that feel, but because we we're going to have late sports and we we're going to have different stuff, and and it was going to be appealing. And uh, the question was whether the advertising community, New York, the ad people are more conservative than they are given, you know, uh, credence for. A lot of people think they're really creative on the cutting edge. Those people are about the last to get in line on anything. So uh, finally, they fell into place about the third, fourth, and fifth year. Before, there were some. I mean, it wasn't like it was a disaster, but uh, <clears throat> it took a while. And in the fifth year, it, it broke across the line. So tell yeah. Can you recall any times when, like, bottom line considerations had to take precedence over uh, journalistic considerations? No. And, no the, know, uh, the, getting the, blowback from the, editors or anybody? The or closest reporters? you came to that was when you, had a, every, when you had a recession or a downturn, you basically froze it at uh, a level that was probably, you know, same as last year. And that would be then 3% or so less than the year before. But there were, you could cut back on, if you were using a lot of stringers, if you were using a lot of um, feature material that you were buying a lot that you weren't using, usually that was the first place to look. Yeah, you'd get that about every uh, three, four, five, six years. For one run was about seven years, it was just pretty good, so. Yeah. So after 2000, things changed. But. <laughs> so, but you got out sort of just in the nick of time. In As it turned out. Yeah. 
So uh, looking at what's going on in the business now and what's happened the last few years, I mean, what do you think about how the decision makers are, are, are handling things? I mean, would you do things any differently or? or um... You know, the, the biggest question for me was, is, I guess, why we don't try to sell this stuff from the papers. Some are trying it. There's experimental stuff going on. But I would have, easy for me to say now, but I think I'd do an introductory rate that I try to get the industry together for, you can get any paper who's part of this group for 595, you know, for three months, then you go to 595 a month. But the hard part in dealing with the industry, which is the group, different groups, is to get them to agree on something. And when we were trying to get national advertising uh, through a uh, consortium, that probably took three years. And usually one, one company, for some reason, had to have, uh, and usually personalities, had to have the power and the ego, and uh, it was just tough to put together. And I think one of the, the, the strengths of the newspapers are they're all different. But the other side of that is if they could work together sometimes, I think it would affect everybody favorably. Yeah. That's, that's still out there. You know, business decisions to me are, are also ethics, wind up being ethics decisions. <coughs> and so one of the things that, um, that some people, you know, looking at what's going on in the newspaper business now, they say, you know, you're in this period of declining circulation, reduced advertising revenue, and then people's solution to that is to <coughs> shrink the staff and therefore shrink the coverage. And so, like, how do you sell this product to people by making it worse? You know, that if people feel like there's less news, there's less in the paper, then they're going to be even less inclined, um, you know, to do business with you. So you have this kind of death spiral thing. Like the more you cuts you make, the crummier the paper becomes and the less it serves. And so that's the, the reason I say this is an ethics issue because ultimately if, you're, um, if your purpose is to, um, you know, to serve the public, um, you're not really <laughs> serving the public when you keep cutting the quality and the, um, and, and, and the amount of news in the paper. So, um, so I mean, what, what's your, your take on that? That uh, It's true. That, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. It's, I, I think it's true. That's why I'm not working there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could, not, I could not work in this environment. I, yeah. I, you know, if this had started earlier, I'd have been gone. I mean, yeah. I just would quit. I, yeah. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't, I, I sympathize with the people. A lot of people got to eat, you know. That's that's out there too, but I I think it's a real tough thing. That's why I'm hoping that the revenue can come in from some of the net stuff. And uh, but it's a uh, it's an issue. I mean, it's a major. You don't if 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 a major city paper slows down a little bit, you might not see it as much because there's still a lot going on. Uh, we'll say uh, Philadelphia. Uh, even I know that as good as the Harrisburg paper is in a lot of ways, I know what's missing. I just, you know, instinctively, it's not the paper it was 10 years ago. Yeah. But hey, yeah. what are you gonna do? Uh, up here though, when you go from, and I might be slightly off in the numbers, but you go from nine reporters to six, you're lucky if you see a Monday paper that's got more than a picture page, yeah. you know? Two or three staff yeah. byline stories. So, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to criticize them, though, because, you know, I know what's going on. And the worst case is they'd go under. So uh, I think that's why they're fighting. And I, I think we've got to see over the next two to five years how this thing plays out. Well, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen in terms of, A, um, you know, size of papers, if they're ever going to get bigger again, and, B, you know, you, do you think we're going to get to the point and how soon where, <coughs> where they, everybody stops printing and it's all just going to be an online I, I can't see that myself, uh, the stop printing, although some have done it. And some have done it just because the markets were small or they were the second paper in the market. Um, I, don't, I don't see that in the short, short term or the midterm. 20 years out, I, you know, it's hard to know. I wouldn't have guessed that it would, got, would have gotten like this, though three years ago, because three years ago, the trend line was, you know, lose a little, hang in. Now, uh, now it's, uh, you know, you're losing 9% circulation instead of three and a half and four. Uh, 
you're losing, you're not getting more net revenue than you were a year or two ago, or if you are, it's minimal. It's just hard to know. And uh, I'm, not sure I, I'm not sure I'd be able to predict that because I would have, I would have guessed, I would have guessed more optimistically. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm cautious for the next year if we get the economy back and there, the increasing evidence is the economy is making its way forward rather than backwards, we might see a little shift.